All right. Um, as far as like the film stream, we have a video front. Uh, we didn't finish shooting. Everything's been transferred to him. So uh, we're in communication with the video department. We're trying to see if that we can get post production editing. If not, uh, Josh does have editing software that we can work with. And he's willing to kind of work on that. Um, just kind of waiting to hear back from. Um, but it's Simone. Barrel. Uh, Simone, Miriam, and Mary. Wesley, those are the three people. Yeah, those, those, those are two people I've been in communication with. Okay. So she's kind of like, she went out want to feel it out, and I, you know, I expressed to her that um, any stuff with regard to cameras we would be doing on campus, and then maybe editing stuff, but not taking any of the equipment outside off of campus because of insurance. Because they're, cause they're liable for that. Equipment. Yeah. Um, unless in the future we can work something out with them. Yeah. Well, I'm going to look into that, but um, we're rolling, so I'm going to switch yep. gears. And, um, Ryan is like our main assistant booking person at the Peachland, and also has his own band, Bronco Samurai Series, wearing two hats today, in that I want, I want him to talk about like what... Uh, he's looking for when he's looking for a local band to put in an opening slot and what he's looking for when people, you know, like some lower level bands nationally are coming through and touring because he has to make decisions about whether it's a good fit for the Beachland or not and just sort of explain that first and then also tell his Broccoli story. Well, uh, uh, biggest thing with booking is, is you know, there's, there's two sides of it. Obviously, there's what they call it a talent buyer because you're seeking talent is one, you know, part of it. And the other is, you know, you, you need to fill a club up. You need to get heads out and you have to ensure that not only are you helping a band make money, you're helping a business to make money. Um, so with, with local bands, whenever I'm looking at a, a local band, new band, um, one thing I'm always looking for is, you know, do you have friends that are engaged into your music you have family that is you know willing to come out and come see a show i mean if you could bring 20 heads out to your first gig you're going to be offered another gig i mean it's tough enough to get 20 heads out trust me I, being a band i mean we started out you know <laughs> please buy our tickets you know <laughs> we got our friends we got our students you know, students i want to try see here with uh always get some people to, to show up but you know at some point you can only rely on your fans or i'm sorry your friends and your family come out to a show for so many shows unless you're just the top of the line, you know. You gotta tell me bands that all the time that that, mm -hmm. that support system is gonna disappear and they're gonna less and less and less and less shows. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, and that's that's where coming uh, it comes into play having a, a quality um, quality material that, you know, you can market outside of your friends, you know, other people like uh, that would be interested to come out to your show and then what I always try to do is I'll take some local bands and I'll introduce them to some other local bands so they can mesh their friends with their friends and all of a sudden you have fans that you've never met these people ever before. They're willing now to come out to your show because you've presented that you have material that they enjoy you know, listening to and they want to get involved into uh, you know what you're doing. Um, and that's the biggest uh, biggest part of it is, is making sure you're getting heads out and the way to do that is I relying on social media is only going to take you so far, but social media still is a big chunk of the game. Um, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Reverb Nation, you got to have your tunes up. To spend some time and, you know, either recording down here at Tri-C, get some, a couple demo songs together, you know, something where you can present to me, the booking agent, this is the material that we have. It sounds polished and, and you actually have spent time on making sure that hey, I might not only enjoy this, other people will too. Um, so social media is definitely a big part of it. Um, Facebook is changing their policies every other week. Um, you know, events used to be the big thing. Um, I, I really think now a lot of people, how many of you get invited to an event like once, twice a day at least, and you probably just now see it, you got invited to... A lot of people just kind of flip through stuff and don't really do it, um, uh, events as much. Uh, but I've noticed like bands in town, it's a really cool um, 
it's an application you can have work inside of your Facebook. So it'll announce your shows, it'll help you promote your shows. You can also track to see where people that you like or have liked your page, if they're connected with that application, it'll show you what city they're, they're residing in. So it also tells you when it's time to start, like leaving Cleveland, let's go to Columbus. We got 10 people tracking us down in Columbus. So it's a, it's a good way to also you know, help gauge when you're ready to start hitting the road as well. Um, and the cool thing with that is also is when you do announce a show and if somebody is following you, it sends them an email that says, hey, uh, XYZ Band has just announced the show right around the corner. Yeah. And that's, that's that direct. I mean, even with the Beachland, we, uh, we rely on our uh, um, email newsletter and blasting to people that have purchased tickets and that like similar type of a show for, for another upcoming show. We use email a lot, and it's, it's a great way because... You're physically almost, you know, here's something in your inbox. You either have to click read or delete. You know, you have the, the option. But I still think it's one of the best. Um, <laughs> so, um, what about um, like when we're sitting in a booking meeting and we're, <clears throat> you know, reviewing a band that we don't know much about that's coming from another city? So, yeah, exactly, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. So then, you know, another part of my job is, yeah, I'm also watching jobs, I'm sorry, I, a lot of bands I, uh, uh, regionally and nationally, and uh, when I'm opening up my first email, the first thing I'm always looking for is it coming from an agent that I know, generally as a regional band, one of the members of the band is still booking the band, and that's what I love to see. I don't want to see a local band that has a manager trying to book their show because it just doesn't seem like that band's like a hard-working band to me. So it's great when I, you know, hey, I'm, I'm Bob, I play in this band, we're from Cincinnati, uh, we've been playing these clubs, we just played, you know, Columbus, this is our Facebook, this is our YouTube, this is, you know, clearly spells everything out, I can check this band out, it tells me who they are. Um, and the first things I, I start to do is I'll start going to like their, their social media pages, their Facebook page. How much you interacting with your your fans? You know how many times you put a post up. You know what kind of a feedback are you getting from from your fan base as well? Um, one thing I always uh, will start looking at as I'm listening to the music, obviously in the background. Um, you know if it's if it's if they have quality music and uh, and I can tell that they're interactive and it seems like they have a buzz going on, um, but they've never been into Cleveland. That's when I'll try to link them up with the local band that's also been doing their, their good part here in Cleveland, and saying, hey, you know, let's, let's get you on a bill with these guys and do a show swap with them. They'll bring you down to Cincinnati. You bring them up to Cleveland. It's, networking is your best thing to have in booking. I mean, it really is a I know, you know, she knows kind of a game, and, and, and it, it really helps to not only know your, your local bands, your local venues, to start looking at other cities, Columbus, and finding out what those bands are, and linking up with those guys, and, and doing some uh, show swaps. Uh, it was a very successful thing I found in Broccoli Samurai. It's a big way that we uh, we ended up getting shows. Is uh, we constantly brought people in. I was booking Broccoli every three weeks, I think, at the Beachland. But you know, we were we were taking the tavern nights. We were bringing sixty to eighty heads out, which was perfect. And uh, in turn, go to these other, you know, other towns with other bands, and started making our own buzz in these other towns where, you know, as soon as you have a nice little region of, you know, let's say Ohio itself, getting out to Pittsburgh was really easy for us. And then um, we started playing Erie, Pittsburgh. Uh, we just got out to Philadelphia, you know, New York City, and beyond and beyond and beyond. And, and, and basically, what you're doing is, <laughs> what you, uh, when you're on the road, you you want to make sure you're not losing money. I mean, it's. You want to make sure you're breaking even, and you're coming home with money in your pocket. Is if you're out on the road for money, stop playing music. <laughs> um, but uh, you know what we'd start doing is, so we'd we'd get these, we'd take little short stints out, make our um, a good following here in Ohio, run out to PA and beyond, out to like Illinois and Indiana, West Virginia. <clears throat> and what we do now is we have some certain markets that are, are money markets. We'll hit this market, and now we have. 50 people showing up here, regardless what night it is, we'll make $300, go to this next place, do the same thing, make another $200, $300, and then go into the new market where you're going to make $0. And, and in turn, as a booking agent here on the, on the Beachland side, I, I am often finding myself 
you know, is, is that link to a lot of bands like, hey, we're from Michigan, we're, uh, we're just going to Chicago, we do well in Chicago, and uh, uh, we're just tapping out in uh, Indianapolis, and now we're trying to come out to Cleveland. So it's, it's my job also is in booking to connect these dots, basically. And uh, there's a lot of bands out there, and you always got to remind yourself there's tons of bands out there, and you have to make yourself special and make yourself look like this is the band that you need to start working with. Um, and I, 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 you know, it's, it's uh, pretty much, uh, God, I'm trying to think of how I'm trying to word this, I'm sorry. Um, I like how I kind of said connecting the dots, because it's, it's really a big part of this job that I do, is um, trying to find out who's the next hot guy, you know, bring him into Cleveland, and their next hot band, and uh, bring them into Cleveland, and we'll do a tavern show, and 40 people might show up, but the entire staff is sitting there with their jaws dropped on the floor, and those are the, the bands we start, you know, trying to help to develop, like, uh, uh, we helped the Floor Walkers out, I'd say pretty extensively, um, mm -hmm. from Columbus, uh, Snarky Puppy, I don't know if you guys are hip to those guys, yeah. I saw those boys play, and was floored out in Columbus, and brought them up to the Beachland, and we didn't know what was going to happen. But we sold the tavern out. It came close to selling the tavern out, I think, with them the first time in. You know, they just won a Grammy. They're out there doing things way beyond, but still, or, you know, contacting the Beachland. You know, hey, next time we're coming through, we're going to go to the Beachland. And that's the kind of connections we like to make here in the booking side of the world. Is um, How does, um, like, I know just from sitting with you in the basement for mm -hmm. hours, you know, like, I've been mean, checking out <laughs> oh, yeah. a lot of YouTube videos, and if you speak on that and how that affects when you're trying to uh, book something, especially for a band that maybe you've never, never seen before. I mean, as far as, as, far as how the impression that you get from a live show and actually seeing that versus like listening to the record. Uh, with YouTube, I generally like to watch a live show um, just to get what you're actually going to get for the show. Because, you know, I, obviously studio recordings, you can do a million magic things and sing off key the whole way through and fix it in post. <laughs> so, um, I, I, on YouTube, I, I like watching live shows uh, for that fact, to, you know. And again, it, it also shows you who's at, you know, you can also see heads bobbing around and, and you know, oh God, it, it looked like that show was really entertaining, you know. So live is definitely what I, I want to hear on that. But for when I'm listening to just a band, I like to hear the studio recordings. Um, again, it, it shows me how professional this band is trying to make themselves. What would you recommend then for someone who, say, has never played a show before? Like, if a band has, like, literally just started and they want to get their first show and they don't have live footage, what? Um, that's totally fine. It's it, At that point, with booking <coughs> local bands, I'm totally fine in listening to a recording off of your Mac okay. computer. I, as long as I can hear it, you know? Yeah totally understand, you know, it's the first show, yeah, I, I, there's, there's even a few bands that we still book that don't have much material out there, but we've gotten familiar with them and how they play live, so it's, it's as long as you can present something, yeah. which is, it takes five minutes, you know, band yeah. practice. I mean, we like would that. tend to probably not <laughs> take on a band that hasn't played a live show before, chances are. But then, I mean, the reality is, is the Black Keys have never played a live show before they played the Beachland. So if we had that as an absolute policy, and, and we would have been missing out on something. And, and what I would recommend, too, is, is uh, it, it's really simple to go to, like, an open mic night or, um, you know, Euclid Tavern does a lot of local shows. You know, they're back open now. Um, just to get out there and get your feet wet, like, you know, it's... It really is, it, it's, it, I'm sure for the class you've taken, you know how to set up a stage, wire a stage and that crap. Bringing your gear on and sound checking is a whole different beast. And you'll feel the butterflies, and you know it. <laughs> and it's good to get those out of the way your first couple shows. And uh, um, What we've done, you know, I, I, a lot of bands for the first shows have linked up with another local band that we've already had at the club a couple times. Um, again, where I said networking is a big thing, like, if, I, I bet you there's probably four bands, five bands out of the students who is in the recording arts. I'm, I've even talked to a couple that are emailing for shows right now, so, um, 
Um, Ken told me something really cool once that I, I still think of. <laughs> um, he told me there's there's only you're only gonna have three big shows. It's gonna be your first one, your CD release, and your last show. And I still think that that was very true because you know the, a lot of these bands. Um, thinking like back to you know Debussy or so, like a lot of those local bands that came in and, and out really quick, and then there's some that have blown up. I mean, I even remember our first show at the Beachland. Um, we brought out like 80 people, and it was like if, for us, it still was like one of the highlight shows. We didn't know what the crap we were doing. We just jammed for like 35 minutes, I think, till they were like, "All right, you gotta get off." But uh, it was it was a really big one, and then at, you know after that, our draw went from like 80 to. 40, you know, it drops off a little bit, because again, you got all your yeah. friends and your family, and yeah. then you got, they got yeah. and the same thing, they come back out for your CD releases, and then they come back out for the last show, but uh, do, you, do you have a band yourself, or? No, I'm working with one that's like really seriously just starting out, so. Definitely. Um, What's the name of the band? They're called the Picassos, it's out of Detroit, I'm, I'm friends with um, the two members that are in it, and they have played like a small handful of shows, but they have nothing up on their YouTube, and they have like 30 likes on their Facebook. You know, I mean, like they don't know how to market themselves. So I'm trying to work with them to to kind of push them to being a a small band. You know what gotcha, I mean? Gotcha. Because they're not even at that point yet. <laughs> no, I, yeah, God, I remember even getting our first 100 likes was like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it's difficult, it really is. Because um, uh, they sound really good, it's just they have no like, <laughs> marketing skills whatsoever. Like, like I met the, the guy that I'm friends with, his name's Charlie, because I was at yeah, another I know, show. I know Ryan. Yeah. What's up, buddy? <laughs> just because I was at another show, and instead of him like coming up to me and being like, here's a flyer for my show, he was mm -hmm. just like, hey. That's, hey, like the whole you, time. You <laughs> get that. I, I've, I've seen a lot of very talented bands, and, and it's... It, it does take a, a certain pizzazz, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it really helps to, to you know, if, if you're going to be in a band or, you know, helping a band is to just be out there with them and, like, be that person, like, hey, thanks for coming out. Yeah. Here's our, you know, if you have a demo CD, here's a sticker. Mm -hmm. Here's this. Here's our next show. Um, and social media stuff, uh, um, not always just doing, like, hey, we're playing this show or, hey, listen to this music. Something fun like, hey, check out this pizza party we just had, and you know, whatever, yeah. you know, something stupid like that. Where it really helps. You get yeah. interactions then with your page. And I was like really proud of him because he went to an open mic and he passed out twenty flyers, and that was like That's a big great. thing for yeah. him because he would only pass out like four. Like the show that I met him at, like he passed out four, and I kept being like, those girls are really like this, and you sound like this band. Why don't you go get them one? Mm -hmm. And you'd be like, no, no, I don't want to bother them. And it's like, but you kind of have to. Mm -hmm. It's, so. it, it, you'll hear this word a lot. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, totally, yeah. <laughs> you definitely know. I remember Ooh. Mikey from Machine Gun Boom, he, when he got flyers out, he would be like, shameless self -promotion. Exactly, I was going to say, <laughs> that one word you're going to hear a lot is this is some shit. But it's not, I mean, you, you have to, if this is something you believe in, and it's something that, that you want to do, you need to, yeah. this is what you need to be listening to, you know, and like, feel confident at that. Because if you're not confident in your own music or somebody else's music that you're working for, I mean, you got to think also at the same side of the person you're handing something to. Why would they in turn want to check it out? Or yeah, he's constantly thanking me. Like I've never had someone behind me like this before, so you know, thanks for mm -hmm. the advice and stuff. And so now on the flip side, uh -huh. if if um, <coughs> into how did you start looking at you? Uh, you know, I, I was taking classes here, uh, I was just, uh, I, I was getting ready to do my capstone, uh, I was doing my uh, internship, I, I had already done like a six month internship with Mike, and realized, in the, in the sound department. I actually had to sign up for a class for the internship, yeah. so I had to do it again, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it was great though, because I, yeah. I was at the Beachland for a year straight, Day in, day out. Like, you know, as soon as class was done, I'd ship out to the Beachland and go hang out with Mike, wrap up cables, whatever it was. And yeah. started, I got to know the staff pretty well. And Ken, the, uh, 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 my predecessor, no, uh, yeah, your predecessor. predecessor, yeah. Um, yep. He, I, I just started playing uh, Broccoli Samurai, was maybe six months old or something. 
and he was constantly tossing his shows because again we were bringing out some heads and I, I he must have just seen he something. He saw something in you. Because I I literally didn't I had never booked a show outside of my own band before. I'd never put a bill together. I had never. I knew nothing about it. So uh, he offered me this job, and and I actually came down and talked to Dave pretty extensively, and he he was like, you'd be a dummy if you didn't take it. (laughs) (laughs) You probably literally said that. Yeah, I I, I think it might be (laughs) word for word. (laughs) But, uh, you know, and then he gave me some recommendations to contact, uh, you know, I I did have some friends that were involved in the music industry. Uh, One was Jeremy Goldstein, um, who was doing, booking some bands already at the Beach Loom. I don't know if you guys ever heard of a band called Papadozio. He was their first booking agent, The Works. Uh, he did, yeah, he did The Works as well. Called him up, and I'm like, school me. And he gave me how, how a show, you know, how the money side works. And it, that, that was, it, it took me a year to really get that full concept around my head. I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of numbers, and you can put them on a paper, and those never come out to the, the numbers you expected the night of the show. I mean, it's, it's so hard to gauge how much money actually is going to come in from a show yeah. but I've gotten after a year or two I think I've, I've gotten a little bit better of a grasp on it you know mm-hmm. so I have a couple of duds but it's booking it's you, you're rolling the duds so so he went over some of the money side for me and probably shouldn't tell you this but yeah. the best advice he gave me is sometimes you need to fake it until you make it and I did. I, We're I came all in. It. Yeah, oh yeah, totally, <laughs> exactly. And, and you don't realize how many people just don't really know. But you, you, again, that confidence side. You have to have the confidence of what you're doing, believe in what you can do, and what you're able to do, and just attack it. I mean, you can do anything. You know, literally, if you really put your mind to it. So, uh, um, Ken, Ken was. Uh, t- Ken, he taught Ken me. was moving on. He wanted to do real estate. <laughs> um, and wanted to. Uh, he stuck around with me for about three or four months when I first started and kind of gave me the gambit like these are local bands you want to know he gave me a whole list of these local bands and said make me an excel spreadsheet and I want you to categorize all these bands down to their genre and and phone numbers and contact you've you've seen it the uh, um, it's it's now an extensive database of of local bands and musicians which needs to be updated it's still I, every every <laughs> month still needs to get updated because <laughs> again you know, there's, there's a bajillion bands and, and well and they, they all so stay together to, for a long time yeah there's, usually. there's that's the other part is yeah <laughs> there's no well, that, this guy now's in this band now i'm playing this and, they're, you know, and we're gonna come back and do this but other new show this guy's new name two bands. <laughs> <laughs> he's both but he's the man of both of these bands <laughs> and he's in both of them mm-hmm. but they just keep the drummer out and this drummer's in this band mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's usually how it works but uh, if, if, if you were you had questions on the money side, I mean, I, I could talk to you some other further point upon that. I mean, there's, yeah. there's a lot of detail into that, but I mean, to kind of give you a breakdown of how the general, generally for every show, there's three, there's really only two ways we're going to go about it. We're either going to put a guarantee down or we're going to call it, it's, it's a door deal where you're working for the ticket sales that come in. Like 15%, right? Exactly. There's anywhere from... We'll start at 100% minus or after club expenses, and I'll factor in our sound engineer, door guy, um, a couple other small little factors. Um, or, or do you like split, like, uh, some deals like with the bar? Yeah, or that, that, there's there's percentages on, on bar take, on free shows. Yeah. Um, there's Mark percentages. doesn't like to do that, but, mm-hmm. but we've been doing it lately. What, the free shows or just yeah. the percentage? It's the percentage. Which is, you know, it's it's tough because that's the other thing too that you know we've been kind of also having to talk about because you know the beach has got some pretty decent beer prices and, and that's also the point of do you, do you have to go to the House of Blues prices which I don't want to because you know it's, it's dipping in but that's one other beast. Um, so I've I've done I've done mainly free shows and that's usually kind of how I work with the shows I booked. Doing a percentage of bar bar take, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, other way is, is let's say we have like a, let's say we have a, just make it even hundred dollar club expenses, and then after I take that and that covers whoever's working, like I said, your sound guy, door guy, a hundred percent of that will go towards bands, and then we'll split that. Let's say you got three bands, we'll go 
60% to your headliner, 25% to your direct support, and 15% to the opener. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, a newer form of, uh, of a deal that actually I formulated with Ken in a way, which is the straight dollar one deal, where instead of us taking our, our club expenses, we will all split the door evenly. Or not, not, I'm sorry, not evenly. We'll take a percentage of the door. The club will take 20% to cover our expenses, and we'll leave 80% to pay bands out and split that up any other way. Um, it's a newer form of a deal. That way, a, a, for a lot of uh, developing bands where I know that you know we're going to get 20, 30 heads out, if I take 150 bucks on club expenses, these guys are going to walk with 20 bucks. We're this kind of a deal. We're losing some money on our side. We're, we're going to eat some of the expenses. Yeah, that's what, that's what, that's what I was thinking. And, but, but, they'll, and, but they'll get some more money in their pocket and that a, way. And a little bit more incentive to bring more people. Exactly. Or come back. Or, or, or tell their friends, like, hey, the Beast Land, they, they treat their bands right. Mm-hmm. Come book a show here. That's, that's yeah. for d- d- yeah. like a developing artist. Because, you know, obviously, there's, we'd love to pay every band a bajillion dollars for, for their performance. But we when it all comes down to, it's a business. And mm-hmm. we, d- we really do depend on well, a band. Well, it's not really a business. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do, but we highly do depend on bands being able to fill our room up. I mean, if you, you've got to make your own keep, it's hard to, you know, you can go play a restaurant or something, you know, make a statement, that's totally fine, but you're not going to walk out with any fans. You know, this is, we're real rock and roll. I mean, this is, this is where it starts, you know, and, and you've got to make your own keep. I mean, it's really what it comes down to. And I definitely know I've seen you sitting there like, you know, if you're booking a band, especially with a younger band, um, you know, hey, what are these guys doing on their end? You know, mm-hmm. I think that, like, you know, it's important for the booker to see that that local band is promoting the show. They have an event on the stage. They are inviting people instead of just being like, okay, I'm, I have the show at the Beachland. They're going to advertise for it. Mm-hmm. And I know you and I have talked about that. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, hey, what's up with that? <laughs> are, they, are they pushing their show? Like, you know, that I, kind of thing. I just read this really good. It, it, it started. This read started off very wrong, and it was it was labeled as like seven reasons why your your band isn't getting booked. And this guy was like so point on with a lot of the information. It actually, made me think like Mark and I were probably gonna put one together ourselves. But uh, um, some of the some of the wording was a little bit like they mentioned like your band shit, and it's like I don't want to put that out there. That's not true. Yeah. <laughs> kind of with those douchey lists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you uh, want somebody in your close group of trusted advisors or friends that will not hold back their opinion when your stuff is not good. Yeah. It's great to have yeah. support and people who who will help you and support you no matter what. But you also have to have somebody in there who will tell you if it's shit. You, it, it helps to have somebody to polish your sound. It really does. I mean, And then you guys have all heard me, all my students have heard me complain about musicians I know that think their job is simply showing up and playing their music. And the, especially the ones that don't even practice that think that, you know, I'm a good enough musician that people should go there, that expect the club to do all the promotion and booking. But it's it's a two-way street. That, oh. that, that was one of the points in, in uh, this guy's write-up in saying, if you're, expect, if, if you're a local band or you're a new band to play a club and you're expecting the, the club to promote your show, you're dumb, basically. And, and it's, it is true. We do as much as we can. But we have huge, expensive shows that we need to focus our energies on, and if it's a if it's a local show, we we'll put it in our listing. We put it on our website. We'll we'll probably get at least one blast out on Facebook about it. But our fans, you you know, if, let's say it's your band, your your fans aren't connected with the Beachland. I mean, it's it's very important, yeah, that a, that a band does yeah. do that part. And I went on to say, if you do go to that club though, and you you knock the park out and fill the fill the room up. Guarantee you the next time you guys play that show, that club will be doing more promotion for you, which is absolutely true. I mean, I even seen that on my own side. Um, it's funny. I, I, I'll still do this on the road too. I'll call new venues that we're playing at and just kind of act like a, a, a customer and say, "Who do you have playing tonight?" And uh, it's band Broccoli Samurai. Well, what do they do? Uh, not really sure. You know, da 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 da. We'll call a club that we played at a, like you know three or four times. Oh, Broccoli Samurai's here. You guys got to get here. It's live electronica. Da 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 da. So, it's, so it, it it really is a big part of as as you put it. You have to market yourself, and you'll get the help you need when you've already paid your dues. I have a question. Mm-hmm. Say uh, say you have a band that 
promoted heavily. Like, you know, they were on Facebook, we saw flyers all over all over the city and they didn't turn they didn't get a good turnout. It does happen. Oh, that that does definitely does happen. Um you know, it, it's uh, a, a, a lot of bands that have been playing the market here in Cleveland for an extended portion of time. I mean, granted, if you went through your, your friends and family, your fan base, and material hasn't gotten new, and, and your draw goes down. It definitely happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I still work with those bands. It, you, it's very common to have a bad show. I, I shouldn't say bad, at least a lower expected draw. Than, than your ever, other average shows. Um, and then that's when it in turn comes back to my part. If I you know, have a relationship with this act and I believe in them, that's where it's my turn to then find a good show to put them on to help you know, boost their, their fan base back up. I mean, um, I, I've done that for numerous amounts of bands. And those are the bands that I always try to find and put on our bigger ballroom shows when we get the, op- the opening slot where we need someone to just help get the word out bring an extra 10 or 20 heads out and that's and, that's, band, and that's and, and that's band that promotes, band's been know. working their butt off yeah, we, for we know great yeah. and oh yeah I, I we we all at the beach and see that it's it's I, I I believe it's really part of my job I mean is to help carry bands when when it when they need the help I mean because the same part they're helping to carry the venue when we need their help you know so yeah especially if people are you know more loyal to us and make sure that we get their CD release party you know <laughs> when it's a big deal I well, mean, even people that come out to Sunday brunches or you know I'll see especially when I have more time to be at the venue I mean I can't tell you how many members of different bands I constantly see out at shows and that's what you want to see you got to be out you know all the time and like they were being supportive of us and the other bands and at yeah. the same time yeah. they were networking yeah. for themselves and you know it's that's something Dave said um, to me. Like people have to see you, you have to be visible. Mm-hmm. I, you know, and one of the things I really like about the high school rock off that we do is I see those that that culture starts with those kids mm-hmm. that they're you know high school bands that are willing to go out and see each other and support each other. That was the most impressive thing to me over the past several years about the competition. When I look, especially when we were upstairs at the beach land, we could look down and see or upstairs at the, the, at the house of blues yeah. and see them down there. And they, uh, the people who were in the front were one of the other bands. Mm-hmm. And when you see that, and you know they're supporting other groups and on the scene, you you know their network is bigger. Oh, yeah. You know they're going to bring out more people. And you want to deal with people who are going to support, because it's a small enough scene in Cleveland that every band knows most of the other bands, mm-hmm. or who they're... Too many people look at it as competition, and if the it's, if the pie itself yeah. doesn't get bigger, yeah. then then somebody's Someone, starving. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's very true. I mean, that's I mean, even broccoli to this day. If I'm out on tour with a band, I mean, we don't go hide in the green room. We're we're out there supporting the opening band, or I mean, even with Lotus just recently, like the guys were even laughing, like we're all down front, you know, same thing, like taking pictures of them, like yeah, you know, so it's it's. Make yourself visible. I mean, it really, it really is a big thing. People remember faces. And now, something I'd like to see in that area is uh, bands. Uh, I know it's enough of a job for a lot of bands to carry their own merch, but bands supporting each other's merch, having mm-hmm. some like, discs aren't as CDs aren't as big as anymore. But maybe at this point, it's recommending other people's downloads on your. It doesn't cost you a thing to put a link to somebody else's stuff on your page. Do that a lot. Also with the T-shirts, uh, a, a lot of us. I see you wearing other bands' shirts. Oh yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's again, you know, you, you're helping your, your buddies out. And hats. Mm-hmm. The yeah, hat game gonna... is up. Except now. for Walker's Cleveland, he will not move off to Cleveland. <laughs> and, and like the, the whole T-shirt thing is like um, Daniel Johnston. Um, you know, like Kurt Cobain was wearing a Daniel Johnston T-shirt, mm-hmm. and everybody wants to shirts, know. And mm-hmm. everybody's like, who's this T-shirt? And yeah. actually, you know, he had bidding war based on Kurt Cobain wearing his T-shirt, mm-hmm. you know? So, like, I mean, that does have an effect because you're on stage, you're wearing the other band's shirt, and then people get to know I'll get that a lot. And and nice vision shirt. And he's, he has a, he has, he's, and he's still a viable commodity of music, like, to this day. Like, people still roll with Dan Johnson. He's like a underground. Mm-hmm. 
So we should we should probably get all of our we should probably Photoshop all of our band logos on Kurt Cobain. That is not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. So oh, this just surfaced. <laughs> right, done. <laughs> well, you know what? Um, but that is a good idea. My my cousin has a or my brother in law has a sweater company. Y'all saw my crazy alien sweater uh, called. Uh, middle of Beyond, and Flea wore one of his sweaters, and it got all around social media. Adam from MythBusters wore one of his sweaters, it got all around social media, and his <laughs> sales went. I I was wearing my broccoli samurai hat in Columbus this past weekend, nice. and two people came up to me and said, "Cool hat, I love that band." <laughs> That's you know I I, I, I what I was gonna get into also is is the sign of branding. Um, yep. Branding is. A humongous thing, and I, I think we we really kind of lucked out with our logo, with the evolution logo, and the band name was something we kind of just. That's we just were, a we, brilliant band name. We really didn't think much into it, in all yeah, honesty, we did not think that much into it. <laughs> and uh, we were, uh, I think, the first year we were named uh, uh, worst uh, local band name. But, but that's good. That's some notoriety. A, a ton of people. Hey, that like, guy who had the worst music yeah. video, he got a whole bunch of press <laughs> from the worst exactly. music video. And uh, I, well, the guy with the, the the swords and the at the squire's castle. No, yeah. okay. I, I even like I'll think back to like uh, I know like Mike Patton said this uh, from uh, like Faith No More. Um, um, especially for, uh, I, he's uh, was saying this for for singers. You know, you can't say a word in a different way. You're not singing it right. You have to have you have to put your own flavor, your own spice on, and people take notice of that. Little Little Wayne was like another. Um, person that spoke up about that as well and I, I, I kind of thought about that and taking that into like the band name and the, the logo and it's, it's just it's weird enough brand it and make it into a household term and and now like touring out there like um, what do you think are some of the outside perspectives of say like the Cleveland music scene and the Cleveland bands in general like what do you what do you see as far as their perception from the outside, like, from the outside looking in you know um Cleveland has a lot of amazing bands. Yes. And there is a lot of them. Um, and traveling a lot, um, obviously your big cities, there's tons. I mean, but there's, I, I don't know, really didn't get that um, involved with the scene to, to know too many of the bands. Um, like e even Pittsburgh, um, if you if you do well enough here in Cleveland, Pittsburgh will consider a band from Cleveland a local band because they have so few acts out there. I mean, it's uh, but when you hit the college towns, they're like all oh, band from Cleveland. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's that's. It all depends. Changes. If you go somewhere that has a music scene that thinks their music scene is hot or it is hot, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But when you go to Miami of Ohio or what were some of the college? Yeah, we, we did one uh, in Virginia. Uh, it was, oh God, it was Harrisonburg. Uh huh. And we thought nobody was going to show up. I mean, you know, doors open. We got all set up. There's maybe 20 people there. 10 o'clock. I don't know where all these college kids came from, but this was supposedly the the, the spot the for spot, the night. Yeah. yeah. I went up and to the, Lawrence, we Kansas. That crowd and... follows to our next gig. Actually, we were about two and a half hours down. Like half the crowd all got up in cars and followed us to the next show. So. Um, college markets are definitely I definitely one of your your best shots to helping to develop a name. And they pay college shows pay money very well. Yeah, very well, <laughs> very well. And if um, you get into a spot like that, and you're in, a, in not a, a major city where there isn't a whole bunch of other stuff going on. You're going to get people who aren't necessarily just interested in your genre coming mm -hmm. to the show because it's the thing to do that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you go to some. Like I said, Miami, Ohio did, had some good shows out in like Yellow Springs when Antioch mm -hmm, was open. Mm -hmm. And you go to a place that's a smaller city, and this is it that's going on that night. And you'll get oh, people yeah. who aren't into your, your style just coming to check you out and finding out if, if they like you. It's very true. Uh, I, and those, those are our tweener markets that we can bank money on to get to go lose money in Philadelphia or New York City or, you know. <laughs> But it's, it's important to have those. It really is. Because those, those people that come out to those shows all don't live there. Like I said, to a lot of the. Of and my they all students. go home and talk to. Yeah. 
-hmm. They do. And in Ohio, there's more private colleges than any other state except Massachusetts. I didn't know that. And, uh, you know, I think we all know about the story about OAR going to Ohio mm -hmm. State to make that their base of operations just because it's on I-70 and I-71 and it's five hours from mm -hmm. everything. You know, five hours from so many different places, it's and then it's the biggest college campus in the in the region. You know, well, they are huge. huge. So you get in a bigger place. <coughs> Ann Arbor, you know, is 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 three hours away. Mm -hmm. You guys do so some the shows whole, up uh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Actually, heading up uh, Michigan next week. Um, uh, I'm thinking of Asheville, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, is that 80, 85 or is that eighty-five? Yeah, eighty-five. You. You can live in Asheville and, and pretty much, I, I call them star-shaped patterns where you go out, you come back, you go out, you come back, yep. you go out, you come back. Atlanta, Knoxville, and you Charlotte, could do that and drive about DC, an hour and a half each night Raleigh, Durham. and tour nonstop. And then there's a ton of universities down there, too. Mm -hmm. Have you been to a tour, man? Huh? Have you toured? Small, little, n never for extensive periods of time, usually just a weekend. Start I had kids there. very early. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I have a question. You were talking about uh, bands helping other bands mm -hmm. coming to shows. Um, does that ever get monotonous where it, the only people are there are the bands? Or or like... No, I they, you know, because cause if, if another band is there, they're, they're promoting to their fans, hopefully they're promoting their fans as well, and they'll be there. And if they, they, they don't... They, I'm what trying to think of like... like well, I'm trying to think of, uh, I've seen this actually just recently happen, I'm not going to throw any band names underneath the bus, but I've seen some certain bands connect with other bands and continue to do the same shows over and over and over again, That's which helps nobody out. First time's cool, second time it's understandable, third time you don't want to go, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go. Yeah. They're just hurting themselves, I mean... That's that's why it's again what what I was saying you know it's it's not only important to network with local bands but to network with other local other bands. you know yeah. it's really simple to Expand. you know just go on even Reverb Nation and type in Columbus Ohio uh, rock and roll bands and it'll give you a whole list of any band from Columbus that's from that area you can check them out go to the Facebook page that's, I did that a lot I mean honestly the then I also talked to other you know whenever we did play in another town I talked to you know whoever me is in that town and say thanks for having us hey you know the next time we come out here who are the cool bands out here that I should get hip with and I get a whole list down and actually my old phone I had a whole sweet little I don't know why I didn't transfer maybe it did in my notes but anyway it uh, it uh, each town I had what bands all that stuff so as soon as we confirmed a show I'd be like I should hit up these four bands first and one of those four would come back and say yeah let's do it and in turn I'd bring it back to Cleveland and yeah, one thing we situation. Like, we got a problem that's like a cut to the chase kind of thing that's worked that I found to be successful is I call a local music independent music store mm -hmm. and say we're like this you know what's kind of a cool band in that genre because chances are a lot of those people probably in band mm -hmm. and they probably at least know the local music scene that's I've always found that to be completely yeah, yeah a very quick way to find out like in your genre who's mm -hmm. kind of like in that city is there a point if you're touring where you give up on a market where you know it's it's just not happening like have you gotten to it and then is there a point where you know if you're doing the star like you said the star tours where you mm -hmm. know okay now it's time to move to the next point you know I haven't had the experience of I've definitely uh, uh, Erie is a good uh, uh, example we played Erie Pennsylvania probably about ten times now and First six times out there, it was just the same twenty people or so. But we just kept hammering it <laughs> until finally we hit the right crowd. And uh, the last time we were out there, we did uh, just a little over like three hundred people out there. It definitely. I mean, it, like, as I said earlier, if this is something that you're putting your heart into, you're gonna keep on going at it. You gotta keep on going at it, and something will shake at one point. If, but if have doing, you, okay, so have you gone, did you play at the wrong venue at Erie? I mean, why, uh, did, uh, why did it take? That, that has happened in other towns, yes. Okay. Uh, um, uh, we were somewhere in upstate New York. We played uh, what you would think is like your paninis almost, mm -hmm. and the place was packed. 
no one had any clue who we were besides 20 people that came out to come see us. And uh, it was more of a country western type of a... At some point, I was even thinking we should put chicken wire up around there, <laughs> wait for the beer bottles to come. <laughs> but you know, again, you know, I, uh, after the show, it's when I went up and I talked to you know the promoter of that venue and said, you know, thank you for having us. This didn't seem like the, the correct venue for us. Is there somewhere else in town where this style of music happens? A little bit? He's like, yeah, you guys should have played at DBGB's. You know, we're, I forgot what the name of the club was. And sure enough, we went there the next time, and and it was what we, where we should have been at and had a successful show. Um, and the, the point in knowing is your uh, the second part. Want to go further out? Um, bands in town helped out a lot. It, it's it's kind of to help to see where your buzz is at, um, and also knowing that okay, I've played this market three times, say Columbus, and we did sixty people there, and then we did seventy people, and this last time we did just a hundred people. You see, it's going up. And then it's time to move out and go further out. Especially if you if you can bank in two hundred to three hundred bucks to cover your gas to get you to that next show, that's when you know it's time to go a further out. So, what's your promotion when you're going as far as Columbus? That that like, what do you think brings more people each time? Um, the word of mouth, you know, going kicking butt, selling merchandise, mm-hmm. uh, going back again, and, and just just keep on tapping at that. You'll get. But how often should you go back? Um, without generally, I'd say. What I do for the beach, and I like to see at least six weeks, at a bare minimum. I generally like to see about two months, or about two months in between, uh, out of town band, um, and it's especially because in, in two months from your last show, people will still remember you. There'll still be a buzz, and they're gonna start getting thirsty to hear your music from about six weeks up to that. You wait too long, people are gonna go drink somewhere else and forget about you. That's that's the other part of it too. I've, there's been a couple markets that we've hit and we didn't visit back for, for almost a year later. One, one is Chicago. I'm actually working on uh, rebuilding our Chicago draw again. Uh, we started doing really well out there um, and we didn't keep developing it and I haven't gone back out for about a year. And, and what clubs have you suffered as a result? Uh, we've been at geez, <coughs> Reggie's, um, Tonic Room, um, what's this corner bar called? Uh, the Elbow Room. We're playing this place called the Beat Kitchen, which I'm pretty excited. I've never, I've, I've heard some good stuff about them. They actually see a lot of our tavern shows. They, they tend to have there as well. That might be um, the other mic now. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up. Maybe. Um, I've looked it through a Johnny Johnny with, I should hook you up with Empty Bottle. Oh, uh, we played an Empty Bottle too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's right. We were going to be at the Empty Bottle, but they had a, a scheduling conflict. Put us at the bee kitchen. kitchen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we do have a, a booking agent now. Um, it was actually from my uh, um, one of the uh, um, booking agents in Erie. Um, developed a really good uh, um, friendship with him from the Beachland side and asking questions like, "Hey, these bands, how, tell me anything. You know, how, how do I make this work?" Held my hand for a little bit, and then he started to uh, help Broccoli out. And uh, uh, the venue he was working at was called the Crooked Eye. They closed about just about a year ago now, I think. And in, in that happening, he and the other uh, um, owner decided to start a booking agency, picked us up, and just basically helped me not have to worry so much about that and focus more. For you, <laughs> if you were if you were starting your own booking agency, just a hypothetical mm-hmm. thing, what kind of what what are the bands that you would take on? Like, would you look at it more of a statistical point statistical of view? Statistical, completely. Uh, but there are some certain bands I would pick up on the. I know they're going to blow up. Phase two. Um, so, part, like, part, what, part what are the statistics is, you're looking at? Is in in. Uh, uh, any booking agent, um, we're, we're getting ready to sign with a, a bigger uh, a company in May. It's a national booking agency. Um, the things they look for, uh, called Intrepid Artists. They do a lot of uh, blues bands. Just kind of started tapping into this kind of like jam electronica stuff. will be the third band. Uh, they picked up one band called Talk that have been just, have blown up. I mean, just booked them in. June, you should definitely go to that one, by the way. Um, 
the things that they look for, though, and, and I've been told this multiple times by uh, different agents, is they want to see you in three markets pulling $1,000 in three markets. Okay. Um, they also, I, it's very important, it's, it's something that I do too, is track numbers uh, of, from, from attended uh like Polestar each shows. kind of stuff? Or? I don't report to Polestar. I, I do my own. I have my own Excel sheet because a booking agent is also going to want to see that. They want to see three markets hitting $1,000. They want to see you playing around 20, 15 to 20 days out of a month and your ability to play that much more. Um, that this Being in a band is a very full-time thing. It's as even David said earlier, you had kids earlier. It's 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 tough enough even to have a girlfriend and work. <laughs> but you know your girlfriend should be your instrument. She yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, so that's it. it, it so they look for those three markets, thousand dollars. They want to see you playing uh, around fifteen to twenty times a month, and they also want to see your numbers. Uh, they want to see like, as you asked earlier, you hitting those markets one, two, three, four, five times, they want to see that increase in numbers going up too. Um, I mean, numbers don't lie. And it's, it's the biggest thing I do look for also in, is in booking too. Um, I want numbers. And uh, it's a very important thing to have. And on top of that is what I said earlier with the social media side. They want to see you have Everything they want the Twitter account, the Facebook, the Reverb Nation, SoundCloud. Uh, got up on Spotify. It took us over eight months. We got to get on Pandora, but finally got on Pandora. It's you have to put in all these building blocks, and they want to see that. As I as I said earlier, also uh, for me as a booking agent, I want to see that band working very hard for what they want and willing to put everything that they have into obtaining their goals. So it's a, a big part of what, what booking agents do look into because there's a bajillion bands. Uh, if I started my own um, record, co or, I'm sorry, a booking agency, there's I could think of probably 50 bands I, I'd love to sign. Um, not all even, including here out of Cleveland. Um, maintaining a schedule for 50 bands, and let's say that's four members per band, that's 200 people, mm -hmm. it's impossible. <laughs> So most agents do limit themselves to 20, 20 bands or so. I've seen a couple do 30, which I don't understand how the heck they do that. But Well, in some agencies, they've started out with, like, two agents. And they, right. Like, Windish has now got, what, like, 50 agents? Something like that, have, yeah. They all yeah. have 20 bands apiece. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> so, uh, I got, I'm sure what, you probably get to Wesley Bright. Windish? Yeah. I, if if yeah, I had Windish money, I'd be throwing every penny I had at those guys. Mm -hmm. I... So strongly believe they have a very bright future. It'd definitely be one of the first Who on the list. Band? Wesley. Wesley, oh yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> Welshy Arms would be another one. Um, known Sam for a little bit. He is a phenomenal guy. Uh, Floor Walkers from uh, Columbus, I mentioned them earlier as well. Um, John is such a hardworking, talented individual. Uh, those guys are in definite need of a, a break. Seem good one. Um, yeah, even you know, I'd love I'd love to put Modern Electric out on the road too. It's another yeah, band yeah, I think that yeah, yeah. really needs to get a van together and. So they, they, I mean, they're in the local scene pretty hard. <laughs> yeah, I think they do very well up here. Yeah, that's probably something else I should kind of get into. If, if in in touring, you probably you, you know a little bit yourself. If Joey's gone on motorcycle tours. He's been lucky though doing the solo thing. Um, being in a band though is a whole different beast. Uh, you gotta drive three, four guys around that you're hoping they showered, <laughs> and you hope that they all remembered all their, their instruments and band gear. Um, we traveled around at first taking two cars, which made us no money, lost a lot of money. Uh, at one point, then I just uh, I traded in my vehicle. I bought a Dodge Caravan, and somehow we fit a drum set, keyboard rig, and we were three piece at the time, and uh, and a bass rig all in the van. We pack it up and just, we went out and did the thing, and uh, 
music video project that somebody is this man. Are you from the video department? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just I just read an email. Uh, sure. Miss Morrow sent out. All right. Sure. Yeah. Come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. How you doing, Jessica? Good. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You read the email. I think. About the right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, Hi, I'm Sean. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming down. Um, yeah, Ms. Barlow sent out an email a couple weeks ago. My buddy's just... Yeah. Uh, he was like, you should check this out. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go over more of that with you. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, it's totally fine. Okay. How you guys doing? We're, just, <laughs> we're talking about touring and booking and stuff like that. So we're doing um, a little session. So, uh, uh, transportation vehicle is one of the big things you also want to think about. And if you're actually getting ready to hit the road, be be ready to take two cars out your first couple of times. Don't go jump out and buy a huge Dodge Ram van. I mean, just waste a whole bunch of money on that. Um, I, I, I can't remember what teacher it was here at Tri-C taught me something else that was very knowledgeable and I still use to this day. Don't jump into something unless you know you need it. I mean, whether it comes to a booking agent, a manager, um, Buying, buying a bigger van, buying a trailer, want to bring in production at your shows, do everything yourself until, you know, until you, can't. until you can't anymore. And it's the same thing with your vehicle. You, you use the hell out of your non-gas guzzling vehicle as long as you can. Um, That's what um, Marky had said. Marky Ray had <coughs> Yeah, said I think that. it was Marky Ray. It was yeah, last semester yeah, he was yeah. telling us that like, he had to turn her down a lot of artists who wanted to hire him as a manager or an agent. And he's like, look, it's not just 20% of your money. It's 20% of your power. Mm -hmm. And if you still have all the power because you're still new, then why not you know, just use that? Why give it up to someone else? I still, to this so, day, have, an, yeah. I have no management and refuse yeah. it. I, I just... Cindy said earlier, you, I, it's good to be in control. Yeah. This is this is my project, and no one else can do anything unless yeah, Chris or I say yeah. anything. I always include Chris. Chris is the drummer for Broccoli. He's, he's the better half. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are the founders at this point. Yeah, yeah. Your, your other guys are, are the junior members. Mm -hmm. Still a, your bass player is kicking, man. He's he's a player, man. Yeah. He reminds me of the bass player from Three Eleven. We've been uh, style. we've we've been testing out this uh, new guitarist, twenty one year old. Uh, unfortunately, went to Full Sail. <laughs> and from Cleveland too. I was like, uh, but the guy who's playing with you down at the H O B. No, it's a uh, five and direct uh, guitarist, Mike Miller. Yeah. I, I I'd love to have him join, but he's he's busy with five. Um, and he plays in his dad's band too. Right? Yeah, he's. He's pretty busy locally, so uh, you guys, 21, just completely shredding. It's having a little difficulty picking up uh, some of the songs. Well, I liked how uh, uh, the guy was playing at that show. It was very uh, sample delic, very loopy mm -hmm. oriented. Um, I was listening to your recordings, and the person who was on some of the recordings on your SoundCloud was a little more ex extending, mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. uh, Miller was. He was. He was in the Tasteful. groove yeah, and just, yeah. you know, uh, sample-like. Mm -hmm. And it, it hit and it fit. Yeah, he's, he's, I'm actually taking him out to Asheville this uh, Saturday as well. He's a, he's a really good guy to play with. Yeah, he's, he's very talented. He, is. he knows some jazz games. <laughs> as far as guarantees, um, how, how, how do you usually um, gauge on what guarantees? Take or guarantee. Don't you're like there's like a band that you never heard of comes in like I need eighty seven bottle of water, three tiles, and three hundred dollars. I give like, my wish list too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Honestly, uh, I if if you're a new band coming to the market, I one thing I always ask is send me your your uh, Cleveland market history, what venues you played at, and your average draw, reported numbers from your last shows. Um, I, I tend to, I'll never put a guarantee up unless I, it's just a no brainer, uh, for a band that hasn't come through the, the Cleveland market in the past. I mean, as I said earlier, again, you got to work for your keep, show me what you're worth and what you can make on your own. And then I'll match that the next time you come through, if not give you a little bit more to, uh, to make a guarantee like that work. Um, 
guarantees all vary. I mean, there's there's a couple bands that they'll just take you know a couple hundred bucks, work for a couple hundred bucks, and they'll also take.